Hello friends, welcome to the channel Mechanics of Solids. In this section, we will deal with the generalized Hooke's law and constitutive equations. For learning the generalized Hooke's law, we must go through three postulates from elementary strength of materials. And the first postulate, I can say that the axial stress is proportional to the axial strain or in other words, the axial stress divided by axial strain is equal to elastic modulus or Young's modulus. Already we have learned this in our previous lecture. Sigma divided by epsilon is equal to E and this, this is my first postulate. Now writing the second postulate. Suppose you have a steel wire in your hand, you just try to elongate that. On elongation, you can observe the lateral dimension, that means the diameter will get reduced and the length will get increased. And in that case, you will be obtaining two types of strains. The first one is lateral strain and the other one is the longitudinal strain. Now, if you take the ratio of the lateral strain to the longitudinal strain, you will be getting another constant and that constant is known as the Poisson's ratio. Here, lateral strain divided by longitudinal strain that is called the Poisson's ratio Poisson's ratio it is indicated by the letter mu and the third postulate as the third postulate I can say that the shear stress divided by shear stress divided by shear strain is equal to modulus of rigidity capital G this is G is known as the modulus of rigidity or otherwise I can write shear stress tau x y divided by shear strain gamma x y this is gamma and this is nu these are my three postulates now I can extend this three postulate I am trying to extend these three postulates why to relate stress component to the strain components I can say that there are totally nine rectangular stress components and there are nine rectangular strain components why I am calling this as the rectangular stress components and rectangular strain components because I can express every stress components in Cartesian coordinates that's why I am telling that there are nine rectangular stress components and nine rectangular strain components to express the state of stress at a point and to express the state of strain at a point. To express the state of stress at a point, I have the stress tensor Tij is equal to here I can write sigma xx, sigma yy, sigma is a z. Here I can write tau xy, tau x is it. Here I can write tau y x, tau y z. Here tau z x, here tau z y. And this is my stress tensor. This stress tensor is quite sufficient to express the state of stress at a point. Here you can see the diagonal elements here. Sigma x x, sigma y y, sigma z z are the normal stress components. Stress along the x direction is sigma x x, stress along the y direction is sigma y y. Stress along the z direction is sigma z z. And there is a presence of shear stresses here. Tau x y, tau z x, tau y x, tau y z, tau z x, tau z y. So in total there are 9 rectangular stress components. But in effect I am taking only 6 rectangular stress components. Because there is an equality of cross shear. Equality of cross shear. Equality of cross shear says that tau xy should be equal to tau yx. Tau xy should be equal to tau yx. Tau zx should be equal to tau xz. Tau zx or tau xz should be equal to tau zx. And tau yz should be equal to tau zy. So in general, we are taking only six rectangular stress components because of the equality of cross shear. Now similarly, I can express the strain at a point. Eij 
is equal to epsilon xx epsilon yy epsilon z z here i can write small letter e xy small letter e x e z e y x e y e z e is an x e is a y in this case also there will be an equality of cross shear e x y is equal to e y x similarly e y z is equal to e z y and e x y is equal to e y x okay fine now i am trying to relate one rectangular stress component with another six rectangular strain components or otherwise i can relate one rectangular strain component with another six rectangular stress components here at first i am relating one rectangular stress component with another rectangular strain components before that i can tell you something what is this e x y e x y is equal to gamma x y divided by 2 similarly E x e z e x e z is equal to gamma x e z divided by two. Similarly, e y e z e y e z is equal to gamma y e z divided by two. Okay, fine. So you must keep this in mind while doing the numericals. Okay, we can come to our point. Extending these three postulates, I can relate one rectangular stress components with another six rectangular strain components. That is, sigma xx is my first rectangular stress component. Is equal to a11 epsilon xx plus a12 epsilon yy plus a13 epsilon z z plus a14 gamma xy plus a15 gamma y z plus a16 gamma x z so this is my first equation what is this a11 a12 a13 a14 a15 a16 these are just elastic constants just keep that in mind now how I wrote that a11, a12, a13, etc. Aij indicates what? I implies the stress component. Stress component. And here the J indicates the strain component. Now you can see I am taking the first stress component that is Ai. In, in the position of I, I am writing 1, here also 1, here also 1, here also 1. And now, in the position of J, it is changing. First strain component, here second strain component, here third strain component, here fourth strain component, here fifth strain component, here sixth strain component. Likewise, I can write or I can relate the six rectangular stress components to the six rectangular strain components like this. Inverse is also possible. Sigma yy is equal to a21 epsilon xx plus a22 epsilon yy plus a23 epsilon z z plus a24 gamma xy plus a25 gamma y z plus a two six gamma x e z similarly sigma e z e z is equal to a three one third stress component and the first strain component epsilon x x plus a three two epsilon y y plus a three three epsilon e z e z plus a three four gamma x y plus a35 gamma y z plus a36 gamma x z okay fine now i can write 
the shear stress components. Here, next is tau. Tau xy is equal to the fourth stress component. I am writing a for one epsilon xx plus a for two epsilon yy plus a for three epsilon ez ez plus a for four gamma xy plus a for five gamma x e z plus a 4 6 gamma y is it we find here again take y is it gamma x is it now tau x y tau y z is equal to a 5 1 epsilon x x plus a 5 2 epsilon y y plus a 5 3 epsilon e z e z this 3 and e z plus a 5 4 gamma x y plus a 5 5 gamma y e z plus a 5 6 gamma x e z tau x e z is equal to a 6 1 epsilon xx plus a62 epsilon yy plus a63 what a63 epsilon ezz plus a64 gamma xy plus a65 gamma yz plus a66 gamma xz okay now I had related all the stress components to all the strain components. For relating this, I required a minimum of 36 elastic constants. Count a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Uh, count this. You will get 36 components. See, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 into 6, 36. Here we have 36 elastic constants. For what? This 36 elastic constants are required to describe the material property at a point on a body. So these 36 elastic constants are required to describe the stress strain relationship at a point on a body or it describes the material property from here a11 that is equal to a22 that is equal to a33 that is equal to e again a44 equal to a55 equal to a66 is equal to g or shear modulus again we can detect these 36 elastic constants. We can reduce these 36 elastic constants to two independent elastic constants. Two independent elastic constants. And those independent elastic constants are known as lambda and mu. Where lambda is known as the Lamy's coefficient. L-A-M-E-S coefficient. And this mu is equal to G or the shear modulus. Shear modulus. And now this lambda and mu, lambda's coefficient and shear modulus are required to get expressions for the relation between elastic constants. Now, in now next topic is relation between the elastic constants. That means relation between Young's modulus. Elastic modulus, sorry, Young's modulus, bulk modulus, and shear modulus in terms of lambda that we are going to find out. Bulk modulus, Young's modulus, and shear modulus in terms of lambda. That is our next lecture. So, these equations constitute or make the constitutive equations or generalized Hooke's law. Okay, thank you.